Hi everyone, welcome back. We're looking today at film noir. And more specifically, we're going to take a look at the film Sweet Smell of Success. The film itself stars Tony Curtis here on the left and Burt Lancaster here on the right. It is based loosely on the real life story of Walter Winchell. Here he is played by Burt Lancaster under the name J.J. Hunsecker. J.J. is a columnist, a very powerful media opinion shaper, and Tony Curtis plays a press agent, which is basically like an agent or a manager for talent actors, singers, musicians, and so on. What are the conventions of film noir? What are the characteristics of film noir? Let's take a look at film noir. It's so dark, it's so honest, and it's such a frank look at the ugly side of being human that it's irresistible. You can already guess that a film noir is not going to have a happy Hollywood ending. The great screenwriter Robert Towne said that noir characters are fated. In other words, we're bringing in a sense of a dark destiny here. Destiny suggests that it is inescapable. There is something within this character that is driving, usually it's a man, forward to his doom. His nature, his innate characteristics as a human, he's so flawed that he will eventually just crash and burn. And you know that it's going to, the film is going to have an unhappy ending. Robert Town says that these flawed characters are like moths to a flame. What does that suggest? They can't help themselves. Some flaw in them that drives them to their fate. In film noir, in these movies, the world as we see it is defined in terms of light or lack of it. And it is a world of light and shadows. It's a gritty world. There are lots of dark areas in the screen, lots of shadows. Frequently the locations and milieu means setting. The setting of these films is usually urban and there are motifs. You'll remember the term motifs from our discussion last week. Motifs are recurring themes. What are the motifs that we see? Usually in film noir they relate to alleys, tunnels, subways, what kind of locations are we encountering? Bus terminals, piers, cheap rented motel rooms. So an alleyway, a tunnel, a subway in these films conveys a single idea, and that is entrapment. You're closed in. The world is closing in on you. In film noirs, the tone, that can be defined as the mood, the attitude of the story is fatalistic. Frequently it's very pessimistic. There's a great sense that the character is driven to their doom by their own failings. The tone also emphasizes the darker aspects of the human condition. It emphasizes our fear, our greed, our ambition, our selfishness, our cruelty. They are about violence, lust, greed, betrayal, and depravity. Well, noir in French means black, so an easy way to describe that is dark, both dark visually, lots of shadows, but also the darker side of our shared collective human condition, of our human behavior. These films frequently have a relentless pace, a sequence of shots and cuts that do not allow the viewer out of the narrative. The editing here is very important. The editors put the shots together in such a way that they don't leave you any breathing room. And the shots run together so tightly and so well, you don't have a chance to come up for air. So we're looking here at visual style. So how do film noir look? Their visual style originates early, earlier in the century back to the German Expressionist movement of the 1930s. And here we have an example from the cabinet of Dr. Caligari and you can see here you have extreme areas of white and extreme areas of dark and then you have grays in between but look at the contrast. The set design here reveals a great sense of contrast. Lots of darks and lots of very bright brights. Let's take a look at our film, Sweet Smell of Success. It's a descendant. It's the idea. You can see in the dark here, everything is very carefully choreographed, very carefully composed. And we can see here in this shot of Rita, the cigarette girl, who is a secondary but important character in our film, you can see the noir shadow and lighting 
and how it derives from this idea of German Expressionism. You can also see even her earring here is backlit, it's silhouetted. What other characteristics does film noir have? It has strong but simple graphic elements. That means these shapes are put up against each other. Contrast of shapes. You have shape within a shape within a larger shape and dark against white. How do we describe the look and the atmosphere of film noir? As visually stark and spare. Early film noir in the 1940s, 1945, they were not high budget films. They were typically considered to be B movies, even though we might look at them today as classics. But that meant they didn't have a lot of money for lighting, so they used single source lighting. That means just one lamp. You'll frequently see slashes of light. So you might have a Venetian blind and some light coming in, and then you'll see a slash of sunlight in an otherwise dark room. There are so many dark shadows that films, generally speaking, cinematographers are encouraged to overlight because they want to make sure the audience can see what's on the screen. Well, these films are not afraid of the dark. They use silhouettes. They are frequently shot from a low angle. The camera is low and it's tilted up. We will see that in our film. There is one important way in which our film is different from no most noirs. Most noirs have something called a femme fatale which is French, basically means deadly woman. In our film, we don't have a deadly woman. We have the opposite. This film doesn't feature a femme fatale. It features a female victim. So the female characters in Sweet Smell are more victims than victimizers. The title is ironic. This film is very important because it is a film noir, but it's also an important critique of the idea of what people will do to get ahead. So the sweet smell of success is not a good smell. It's saying the sweet smell of success actually stinks. Our main character is Tony Curtis. We are obliged to empathize with the plight of an unethical press agent and his sordid underground world. He is not a good person. He is a person who will do pretty much anything to get ahead. So it's an unusual position to be in where the audience is forced to empathize with someone who is not really a hero. Paul Schrader calls the noir hero a flawed hero. And in this case, this character, we can call him a small monster. I want you to pay attention to how he moves. Okay? His, his New York accent really works for him in this case. And his movement and his anxieties are conveyed through movement. He has some shred of conscience. So he's not completely bad, but he doesn't have much of a conscience. I want you to pay attention also to the dialogue. Stylized whiplash language. Because profanity wasn't allowed in movies, okay, at the time you couldn't use four-letter words, you couldn't use obscenities. Because you couldn't do that, how do you convey violence in language? The screenwriter, Clifford Odets, used this kind of language which was very muscular and aggressive. Okay? It didn't use any four-letter words, but the delivery of this language, of this dialogue, is very sharp and rapid. So pay attention, and if you need to put on the, the closed captions when you're watching it, I, I recommend doing that. It'll help you understand what they're saying. What's important to understand about the cinematography of this film is that it's very realistic. What that means is that it is motivated. Now, motivated lighting is an important term. It means that it doesn't feel cinematic. We don't feel because of the lighting that we're watching a movie. The lighting feels natural. Why? Because we sense its source and location. So if we see light falling on a character's face, we can imagine it's because of a window nearby or because we see a light. Frequently in films, their lights are invisible. We don't see them and we don't know where they are, but everything is perfect perfectly lit. Okay? It feels so cinematic. Here, we're not dealing with that. The lighting here is much more realistic and motivated. James Wong Howe's cinematography is luscious and beautiful. When you watch it, it looks fresh. It looks like it was just made yesterday. Let's take a look at sound. The score was written by the famous composer and musician Elmer Bernstein. The style of the score, of the soundtrack, is what we might call crime jazz, which really means that there's a lot of brassy elements in it, lots of horns, trumpets, saxophones. 
The first motif you're going to encounter in the film is J.J. Hunsecker's eyes. And here's an interesting thing is we don't meet Hunsecker for like 20 minutes, or the first 15 or 20 minutes until we actually meet him. Everybody talks about J.J. So a great way to build up suspense is to talk about someone and then don't let the audience see, the, see him. But you're going to see him in the newspaper. You're going to see him on the side of a truck. Here's an example of where you're going to see him. Um, right at the beginning of the film, this truck leaves the printing press and it says, go with the globe, read J.J. Hunsecker, the eyes of Broadway. And what is the motif? J.J.'s eyes. They're everywhere in this film. Here's another example. You can see a picture of J.J., right? But here's his eyes and there again, his eyes. You'll notice here, for example, the first time we see him, you'll see his eyes again and how they're shaded. You see how right above his eyes, there's shadows? Look how we can't read his eyes. Those imposing horn rim glasses and his eyes. He is a dark and imposing character. Finally, I wanna just leave you with this idea is, what does Sidney want? And the film tells us right in the opening minutes what he wants, and this film is all about Tony Curtis's character wanting to get ahead at any cost and doing whatever it takes. And what he tells his secretary is, I wanna be way up high where it's always balmy, like Florida is balmy, warm and sunny. So that's what he wants. He wants to be up in the penthouse. You'll notice where JJ lives is in a penthouse, one of the top floors in one of the skyscrapers in New York. And if you've ever been up there, I was up there once, a friend of a friend in New York City, and wow, I mean, I'll tell you, you feel like you're on top of the world, right? You live as though you're on top of the world. You can see all of New York at your feet, and you feel like you're a god, right? You feel like you own this city. And that's what, that's what uh, Sydney wants. When we come back from the film, we'll take a look at the themes, and we'll discuss the themes and the visual language. All right, enjoy the film, everyone.